All right, we now welcome on another special guest, somebody we're really excited to have on today. He is a uh, sporting Kansas City midfielder. He also plays on the U.S. youth national team. It is Gianluca Busio. Welcome on. Yeah, yeah, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, so to start it off, um, so like with COVID going on, Kind of how have things have changed behind the scenes for you guys at Sporting Kansas City and like morale of the team or just like everyday operations like with practices and whatnot? Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it was, it was tough at the start with, uh, you know, the quarantine for, for the, the couple months. We couldn't train and, you know, we were all back home kind of. We didn't know what was going to happen next. But I think ever since the, the season got restarted after the, the bubble and everything, I think the team has been, you know, back to somewhat of normal. Um, obviously, it's a little different with, you know, you got a social distance and wear a mask and everything. And you don't have, you know, as much freedom as you used to. But um, it's 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 kind of normal, back to normal. You know, we're still in the locker rooms together and, you know, we still play in, in stadiums. So um, I think the biggest change is just the, the travel also. We have to go in the same day of the game. So that's probably the, the hardest thing to adapt to. But um, other than that, I think I've, I mean, it's been it's been somewhat of a normal season uh, outside the first couple couple months getting used to it, um, but now I think we're 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 all good and you know the team's in a I mean we've been winning games recently so the team's morale is pretty good right now and um, I think we're all you know in in into a, a normal schedule right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I know you got uh, uh, what do you call it? Like the MLS just like restarted and you guys are having a really good season right now. You guys just got what. You guys won. Was that yesterday or two days yeah. ago? Uh, I think it was yesterday. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, you guys played yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah, good one. The, I mean, the morale of the team definitely. Uh, would you say like it's it's it, it, like it's gotten like it's got it's gotten better? Holy hell! And would you say oh, yeah. like yeah for sure? <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Um, how do you think it like it's, it has changed in the last like three months? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Obviously. Uh. I think the. The first months, I think it was it was just difficult because of uh, you know COVID and everything, and we didn't even know if we were going to have a, a somewhat normal season, so we didn't know we were going to play any games. And um, I think the the bubble, I think that's uh, that was tough for everybody. Um, obviously, we had a we had a decent outing there, but uh, you know we were away from our families. You know we were in a hotel for a month, so I think the morale was kind of down then. And, you know, once we got out of that and they released that, you know, we're going to have a normal season with, with, with games and stadiums and stuff. I think the morale went, went right back up and, you know, obviously when we're in the, in the top three right now, the morale is going to be really high. So I think that's one of the biggest things. If, you know, everybody in the team's in a good mood, then you guys are going to be, be fine. And, you know, hopefully we can keep on winning games. Yeah. So are you guys a team that kind of um, puts their goals out, like very, like, everybody knows them as a team and like for you guys what is your goal for the year yeah oh yeah for sure it's um I think our coach makes it really clear on what he wants and you know what we're trying to achieve and you know obviously at the end everybody that wants to you know wants to be the champion win the MLS cup so that's obviously our goal in the, in the end but um with this uh with COVID and everything it's kind of been just we want to be consistent so you know we have when the schedule released we had 10 games left and you know our goal first goal is to get you know, as many as the 30 points we can get out of that. So uh, right now we're at nine out of, out of you know, nine points. So hopefully we can get all 30. But that's our first goal right now is to do that and make playoffs. And then, you know, if Supporter Shields come, then MLS Cup. And, you know, we want to win all of that. So I think those are definitely our goals, you know, close range. Yeah. Speaking of goals, like what would you say your goal is, like personally, for, like for yourself, um, for this season? Uh, this season – uh, I think at the start of the season, I, uh, my, my goal was to be, become a regular starter. I think, um, you know, the last two years I've gotten minutes, but that was mainly from the bench and, you know, I didn't really make a, uh, lock down a spot, you know, to start. So, uh, this year was a lot more difficult with, with COVID and everything, but it also came with a lot more opportunities to, to get on the field. And I think kind of now I'm actually, you know, starting pretty much every game and, you know, kind of locked that down a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I think that, that was one of my goals. And then obviously the, I always want to impact the game with, you know, goals and assists, uh, I like attacking. So, you know, scoring goals and assists and, you know, I think I can, you know, up my stats a little more, but, you know, it's a, it was a, it's a good start. And uh, eventually I want to play in a playoff game. So I think that's the, 
the next one I'm shooting for. So how do you, as a player, what's your process of getting better and improving your game? Is it like watching a lot of film, watching a lot of like other professional games like Champions League, Premier League, or yeah. kind of what is your process there? Um, I think it's, it's different for every player. Uh, for me, I like to – I kind of get my – I kind of work on my game mainly in training. Um, that's, that's where I learn the most really. Um, so – if it's the next day after the game, I'll obviously we all watch film and, you know, I'll watch myself after every game pretty much the night of. And, you know, the next day in practice, I'll, you know, go out there and, you know, focus on one thing that I didn't do well in the game and, you know, try to work on that. And if there's something I saw and want to do the next game in training, you know, I'll try that, you know, the, the whole practice and try to change that. Um, so, yeah, that's how, that's how I kind of deal with it. I like to see it first and, you know, I kind of know what I what I need to do or after a game, I know what I you know, could have done better in. And, you know, that makes me go out and work on that in training. And it's, you know, starts with film and then, you know, ends up with you back on the, the practice field and, you know, whatever drill you're doing, try to work on, you know, what you set out to, to work on. And, you know, for me, if it's my left foot, I'm gonna go train, you know, my left foot, the whole practice, something like that. So, uh, yeah, but it's different for every player. I just kind of do film and practice are the main things for me. Mm -hmm. So, I guess, I mean, you just had a game yesterday, so. Yeah. Was takeaway from that game specifically that you need to improve on, like that you saw yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I could have. Well, one thing I could have been, I think I could have been a little cleaner in the, with my, I don't want to say final pass, but my final, my finished, I guess, the touch to set up the finish. I think I made some good passes there in the final third, but I also felt like I could have been cleaner myself with, you know scoring in the end really and you know, there was a couple of times where you know the right right before I was going to shoot you know the defender blocks it or you mm -hmm. know I'd slip up and make a take a bad touch so you know if those are clean and that can be a you know one or two goals for me so I think I want to clean up on that and obviously just keep on threatening in the, the attacking third with not only passing I mean I mean obviously I mean right now you you came from where like North Carolina right before yeah, you were at North Carolina, yep. I mean, and you've been at Casey for two years now. How would you say, like, your maturity level has increased? Because, I mean, you came in as, like, a 16-year-old, and now you're, like, eight, you're 18, right? Yeah, 18. Yeah, so how would you say, like, or how, or, yeah, how would you say, like, you've developed as a player and, like, on and off the field? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, you have, to, you have to go pretty quick when you're moving here at, the, at such a young age like, like I did. Um, you know, especially for me, I wasn't with my family either. So I was living with a, a host family. So I was living with a different family, you know, different school. And, you know, it wasn't just maturing in soccer. It was maturing in life pretty much. I didn't really – I was basically already trying to, you know, be a professional before, you know, I played in academy games. So um, that was definitely a, a wake up for me to kind of – I had to mature quicker. You know, I had to learn, you know, a lot more responsibility and everything. And I think it, it helped me not only on um, – in life, but it helped me in soccer also because, you know, I, I learned the game a lot more and, you know, it really, it really made me commit to the game more just because, I mean, I already committed by moving, you know, away from my family to, to play soccer. And, you know, at, in the academy, you have to, they, they treat it as it's already professional. So when I was in the academy, we were already being treated as professionals. So that helped me with my game. And, you know, outside of the field, it was all up to me to, to make things work. So soccer was already set up for me and, you know, I just had to, be the one to, to push myself to make that jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So off the field, I mean, me and Curtis, like, like you're, <clears throat> what you're saying, like you're away from home and you're like such an age growing up, me and Curtis are away from home at college right now. Yeah. And it's like, obviously like just mentally draining, you know, at times. <laughs> so yeah. what, how, what are some activities you do to just kind of give yourself a mental break or like, just what kind of, what, what do you do for fun or like just. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's changed a lot. Nothing has stuck yet, but uh, I've been golfing a lot recently. That's been one of the, the main things I guess I've picked up right now. Um, obviously, video games will, will get you through a lot just because, you know, you can still connect with your, your friends back home. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I've started cooking recently just because, you know, I got a, my own place now, so I have to make my own food, so I'll be cooking. Um, yeah, that's about it, though. You don't really have or you don't really want to do much after you get home from, from training and games, you don't really feel like going out and doing anything. So 
I like to stay home. So, yeah. you know, a lot of TV and I video games. And if I have energy, I'll try to go golf or something. But <laughs> not much going on after training. <laughs> yeah. So what was kind of an underrated dish – that you make like you said you started cooking a lot what's the underrated yeah. dish that you make that um well i'm still i'm still learning a lot <laughs> I'm, sticking, I'm sticking to the basics right now yeah. but definitely i would say my steak is is steak? Up there. yeah we have it before or we've had it before every game day and yeah. it's it's we won three games since then but um yeah, i think i make a good steak so i think that's my best dish right now are you living by yourself or do you have roommates? No, nah, I live with uh, Jalen and Jake Davis from uh, – he plays on the, the second team. Yeah, we just had Jalen. I think Jalen was our episode last yeah. week. Yeah, no, He was saying he goes right. golfing too. I, do you, I yeah. mean, I, you guys probably go together then, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. We got into it together. We got in like two years ago together. Uh-huh. We started golfing at a – charity event and we both suck so we kind of like all right now nah, we gotta we gotta look better for the next one so we started golfing for like yeah. two years great who's, who's the better. better golfer then out of you two i want to say me of course i'm gonna say me <laughs> but he's nah, he's gotten better we've both gotten better we're both improving together but i think i am a little better right now but we also haven't golfed in a while with our schedule so i can't really judge him right now mm. yeah you guys take lessons or just for just for like going by yourself? And- <laughs> no, we told no, we're learning on our own. Yeah, that's how <laughs> told, I learned too. We take golf other, lessons. Like, not- yeah, like I mean, they have like country clubs and stuff have like golf pros. Oh, yeah. No, we we see it all the time, but we're like we're learning on our own. Yeah. <laughs> we're not taking lessons. Yeah, my one friend here at school, he is on the golf team, and I really mm-hmm. want to go out with him because he's like shooting like below par and stuff. I want to go out with uh, him just so he can teach me. Bad. Like, I'm sure you could just teach me a few things and I just improve so yeah, much. Yeah, it's a, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes on in golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How would you say um your 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 relationship is with like the other KC players? Um uh, it's really it's really strong. I think our our um our team especially is a really close group of guys. We've been together for I think we've had the same, you know, core group for about since I've joined, so about three years, two years ago. Um, we're all really close and, you know, even if there, there's a big age gap there, we also have a, we have a young core. So if that's from like, you know, 17 through 21, we have that group. And then we have the, you know, the older guys with families and everything. So I think we, we are, we're, we're really close though, no matter the age gap, we all act the same and, you know, we all have little jokes with each other and, uh, it's, 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 it shows on the field how, um, how, you know, close we are and, you know, we all know each other and we all, you know, like each other, but. We're also competing, and we know that you know we're trying to take each other's spots in the, end of the day. So we're a competitive group, but it's also you know all love in the the locker rooms and on the the practice field. Who would you like? Who's like the the oldest player on the team, and who's like 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 what are the like the age difference between the youngest player and the oldest player? Oof. Oldest, I think, I think Roger maybe is thirty two or thirty three. Damn, I think he's the oldest, or one. It's either Roger. Or Zeusy, I don't know, one of them. Yeah, thirty-two or thirty-three is the age range of the oldest. And then, I, well, not me. Me or I think, yeah, I'm the second youngest. So Tyler would be the youngest. So he's seventeen. Because I know, like in the locker room, like the vibes definitely, like whoever's on Ox definitely, I feel like it's like the vibe is definitely different. Yeah, no, nah, we don't we don't let them get the Ox. See the me or <laughs> one of the young guys has to get it because we don't listen to. It any of that what they listen to. but we put the, we put them on though like they like our music a lot more than, than they thought they would so yeah. we're good what's what's the some type of music you guys have been playing in the locker room that you put them on to yeah what's your go-to yeah. like what's your go-to pre-game music i mean like pre-game song. Oh, pre-game uh well we have a whole playlist for that because set up in the locker room uh some i don't know they kind of any they like a lot of drake so i think yeah, Drake's up there. I don't know. There's, it's like a real variety because we, we have some old songs like old Eminem. They like Eminem a lot. So we have an old Eminem. We have to have some Latino music in there for all the Latino guys. And then, you know, any hype, hype music, I guess. Drake. Drake, for sure. Drake, a lot of Drake. There's a lot of Drake in there. I'll tell you that. They all like him. But in the locker room, like at practice, it's all, they like R&B a lot. So like Bryson Tiller, The Weeknd. Those are like the main plays. I don't really like to get hyped that much before practice. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you've been on the team for a while now, and you said you're the, still the second youngest guy. Do you feel like yeah. you're still treated as one of the younger guys on the team? Or <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I think everybody kind of knows me as the, the young one, I guess. But it's also – they also kind of know that I've been longer – been there longer than some of the guys on the team yeah. who are, you know, a lot older than me. So I think, uh, you know, I've, I've earned my respect to them, but, you know, I'm also one of the younger guys, so you kind of have to be careful with that. So I think, you know, even if I stay here for, for two or three more years, I'm still going to be a young guy, you know. So no matter how long I stay, I'll probably be considered one of the young guys. So, um, yeah, but I think they, they treat all the – they treat me with, with you know, respect, but they also, you know, take care of me and take me on their wing. So it's kind of like, you know, the best of both worlds. And, you know, I treat, you know, I respect them, and, you know, it's, it's a – it's a good relationship. Yeah. Speaking of um, what you were saying, you said uh, like, like like whether like like it will, wait, whether you leave KC or stay. I mean, let's move on to like what is your? I mean, obviously, like your goal is to pro like like all pro football player is to end up in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how is that? Like, how is that with like your like your current like coaching staff now? Like, do they understand? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think going into it. Uh, I mean, this isn't anything like new for any of the coaching staff or any of the, the players, really. Uh, I told them, you know, once since I, you know, first signed, you know, literally the the same week, you know, I'm telling them, uh, I told, you know, I'm telling them that my goal in the end is to go to Europe. That's what my my dream is, and I want to follow that. So I've been pretty open about it and saying that to to everyone, really, in interviews. I've said it that. You know, I want to go to Europe at some point. That's just the goal of mine. So playing Champions League and, you know, playing those big games. So that's something that, you know, I've been working towards and, you know, I'm, I'm happy here. I'm, you know, happy at sporting. They've helped me develop and they've developed me, you know, tremendously. But, you know, obviously I want to, you know, make that next step and see if I can make that next step into, into Europe. And um, I don't want to rush it, but whenever the time comes, I think the, the coaching staff knows that, you know, it's what I want. And, they, they also know what's right and when the right time is, but it's also, you know, 50-50. So, you know, if we're both on the same page and, you know, I want to leave, you know, in this offseason, then it'll happen. But uh, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. But if so, uh, then uh, we can make it happen. But it has to be right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you think would have to happen for you to stay, in, like, in MLS? Like, what's the number one thing? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess well, I think – Right now, play time is one of the biggest things because yeah. if I'm not playing here, then and there's you know interest in Europe, I I wouldn't be happy with that. But the fact that you know I've you know earned myself a starting spot now, and you know I've, mm -hmm. and I'm starting a lot. If you know I can play a, a complete season, you know with you know 30 plus games and start pretty much every game um, at a, as a 18 year old, then and I'll be pretty happy with that. So I think it depends on play time and. And yeah, just how I feel, and you know what I when I think's right, and when they think it's right. All right. So how about how about this MLS for you to stay? Let's just say they gave you like two hundred k a week. Let's just say let's just say two hundred k a week. Two hundred k a week. But then, but then, like let's just say Real Madrid, like they're highly interested in you. What are you doing? Mm, probably go to Real Madrid. <laughs> I mean, it's Real Madrid. I don't think I think a lot of players would say Real Madrid. Who would who would turn down Real Madrid exactly? Yeah, yeah but what they're what they're paying you way less, and you're not really like let's just say you're not uh like you might not even play like every game or even get minutes. Hmm. Well, still probably go to Real Madrid. <laughs> grind <laughs> grind your way up to the like, top. Eh? Nah, he's like shit. I'm gonna go there. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Yeah. yeah, we'll find out who's gonna play. Yeah, um, I mean, you have your Italian citizenship, so I mean, I've been seeing in the news your link to some Italian clubs, like they've just been showing interest. And another, Weston McKinney is in Italy right now playing for yeah. Juventus. So, have you talked to him at all about like, what it's like there and just any potential expectations? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't really. You know, I haven't talked to him at all really i mean i'm not I, I mean i've heard of him obviously and you know uh he's one of the, the better better american players so uh you know i kind of look up to him a little bit but uh no i haven't talked to him and obviously he's, he's doing well and you know in italy and you know obviously that might be 
one of the places I end up. So if it comes, you know, closer to the time, I'll probably reach out to them and, you know, try to offer some or get some advice or, you know, see how it's going to, how it is there. But um, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I haven't really thought about it that much just because of, you know, our season and everything. So I try not to, you know, get my head filled with that kind of stuff. And, you know, in the off season, we'll, we'll talk about it more, but, you know, right now it's, it's kind of, it's, it's cool to have the, the interest and the rumors and everything, but, uh, I try to put that behind me for now mm-hmm. and, you know, focus on, on playing. Yeah. No, that's good. You don't want to be distracted. Yeah. Wait, let's make a little, let's can we make like a bet here that like, let's just say you do end up somewhere. We're not going to say it cause we don't know where, obviously uh-huh. we, you would have to tell us just so we could feel like so much better about ourselves and we would have, and we want to be the first ones to break the news. If that's okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give you a break. All right, but... <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm curious. So you have your like Italian citizenship. How often mm-hmm. have you been to Italy? Oh, I've been a lot. Uh, my dad's Italian, and his whole his whole family lives there. So they still they're still all in uh, Brescia. So we go there every summer, pretty much, or used to every, go every summer until um, I mean I signed. So we have the we don't have the summer off anymore. Um, but you know, we before before I moved to Kansas, we went up there. You know, every summer, and you know. When I was younger, we went summer, Christmas, and pretty much every time we could. Um, but, you know, we got older and we had, you know, school and everything like that. So it kind of slowed down. But um, I've been probably, I can't even count, I've been there a lot of times. And, you know, obviously I've gone there with travel for for national team and everything. And, you know, I'll try to see my, my family there and everything. So, um, mm-hmm. no, nah, it's I've, I've been there a lot of times. So I'm pretty familiar with Italy and, um, you know, my pretty much – my whole dad's side of the family still lives there, so that's that's pretty cool to have. So did, yeah. did the Italian like cooking get that that <laughs> skill get passed on to you? Yeah, you still learn? Not, not me. I don't think it got passed <laughs> to anybody in the family besides my mom. So <laughs> I think we all we all missed that. But uh, now my grandma was the she was the cook, and you know she was really good, and uh, she gave all the recipes to my mom. So my mom holds it all right now, and. I haven't had her cooking in a while, but she used to cook mm-hmm. every meal for me, and it was, you know, amazing. So uh, I'll probably have to ask from her sometime. Before we move to national team stuff, how would you say your Italian is since you're there? So like, so uh, right now it's rusty. Um, I haven't had to speak it that much, and you know, it was it was good when I had to go there. I mean, not great. Like I can understand you, but I didn't really like speaking it that much just because I didn't feel comfortable. But uh, I can still understand it now. I just probably couldn't really tell you much. So I probably have to clean up on that if, you know, something happens. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I feel like it's easier to, like, listen to a foreign language mm-hmm. than speak it. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. So coming up this summer, there's a pretty busy one from a national team perspective. Mm-hmm. I think there's a ton of competitions. Do you have any like rosters or um, competitions that you're that are stick out to you personally? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I think I've I've been on the the U twenty team recently. That's the team that I've been on now. So uh, obviously, I'm gonna mainly focus on that. And um, you know, obviously, we all want to make the national team or the, the the Olympic team at some point. So obviously, that's the the ultimate goal. But um, like I said, I've been on the U20 team and, and I'm worried about what they're doing next. So I think, you know, we're going to have World Cup qualifying at some point. So, you know, obviously I want to make that roster and, you know, help that that team go to the, the World Cup and then eventually play in a, another World Cup. So, um, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. And, you know, obviously there's, you know, men's men's national team camps and the, the Olympic team. And that's all something I'm going to work towards, of course. But, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, heard about it if I don't get the call up I'm going to try to just work harder and you know make the next one so uh, for me it's just the the main focus is the U20s right now yeah when you were at, um on the U17s I know you guys uh, made it to the World Cup how can you talk a little bit about your experience with that and like how it, like it helped you grow as a player yeah um yeah it was a it was a special experience um obviously it didn't really go well but just to to qualify one it was the big thing and then to be there with you know other you know big countries you know like brazil netherlands and england or all of them uh it was, it was pretty special and uh it was a good experience to have um you know showing how, how high level especially guys my age are 
and you know knowing where where we stand and what we need to to get better at and um obviously it didn't go how we wanted it to but um i think you, you learn a lot with um with uh not only winning games with losing games you learn a lot and i think we learned we learned a lot on the in that in that world cup and you know it was in brazil it was a nice place nice stadiums the games were intense and uh, I really enjoyed it and it was frustrating, but, um, you know, looking back at it, it, it helped me as a player. And I think everybody on that team can, can take something away from that, that experience. Mm -hmm. So as that, that team, were you guys a close knit group? Do you guys, like, do you guys still communicate a lot or? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. No, we're, we're really close. We basically, you know, grew up in the national team together. So, you know, we started, I think all of our, or the main group was, you know, called up probably when they were, we were 14, maybe. I think those were our first couple camps. So we went through the, you know, 14s, 15s, 17s together. And, you know, now we're either all in the 20s or the the, the first team, some of us. So, um, yeah, we're, we're a real close group. We all stay in contact, you know, Snapchat, text, all that kind of stuff. We all, we all, we're all really close with each other. And, you know, we love seeing each other, you know, do big things. But it's also, you know, a little competition in between us to, you know, see who can one up each other and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully that, you know, that whole group is, you know, can make it far. We're all really good friends and we wish the best for, for everyone. Would you say you're the, uh, you were, or are the closest with on, on that U17 squad? Um, probably George Bello from Atlanta, Joe Scally from New York. And I think me and Gio are really close also. Um, so yeah, I think that, that was the main group. We were pretty much uh, mm -hmm. together every camp. So we've been to like, a bunch of camps together and you know we know each other's families and everything and you know we we're, we're really close and um yeah we still talk now all of us so um yeah it's probably the the closest when you were playing with geo um like back then could you kind of did, did you foresee that he would have so much success in the bundesliga like the success he's seeing right now oh yeah for sure i mean you, you could tell that you know, he was an extremely talented player. You know, he's one of the guys that, you know, you, he's just, you just tell that he was blessed. He's, you know, he's a big guy and, you know, he's probably one of the best guys with the ball. So, you know, you put that together and, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. You put all that together, then, you know, you're going to, you know, build pretty much a, you know, a star. And uh, it was only a matter of time before something like that was going to happen. Obviously uh, it, it, you know, everybody, everybody knew a lot about him, but, you know, he was waiting until, you know, it was the right age before he could leave and stuff like that. And, you know, he's at New York and he was doing good things there, but, you know, people wanted to see him make the, the next step. And he did that. And, you know, once he moved to Dortmund, you know, I already knew that, you know, he was bound to, to make the first team and do, do big things. So um, for me, it's not really much of a surprise that, you know, he's playing so well. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, you know, wish the best for him. And it's, it's pretty cool seeing him do those kind of things. Yeah, I heard I heard his younger brother is better than him, like at age four, like whatever he is right now than Gio was. Do you know if there, is there any truth it, in that? Uh, there might be. I've heard a lot of things about him. Now nah, his whole his whole family is like, extremely talented. Yeah. they're all they're all really nice people. His, he has a little sister also, and you know she's pretty pretty good at soccer too. So uh, now nah, they're all they're all nice people and you know they're really talented family so i wouldn't be surprised if you know his brother you know outshines him mm -hmm. all right well we're gonna move into our last section the fan questions we got a few from instagram and on reddit so these we can go kind of quicker you know one <laughs> right. word sentence answer um first one from jack Unsol. what's your best advice for someone young wanted to make it pro uh i've been asked this a lot um uh, I would say just just be ready whenever. Um, I think, you know, for me, it happened at such a young age that, you know, people will look at, oh, I turned 18 and I'm not pro already. You know, it's I'm not going to make it ever. But I think there's different pathways for everyone. And, you know, obviously I got lucky to start young and a lot of people are starting younger. But, you know, it, it just be ready for whenever there's different pathways and there's different you know ways you can make it and different routes. So. Uh, whenever your time is going to come, you just have to be ready for that and continue to work until, you know, you get your opportunity and, you know, it will happen at some point if you work hard enough. Oh. Our next question is from Ahmed Dula. Uh, he goes, Messi or Ronaldo? See? <laughs> Messi? Yeah, I see a little Ronaldo poster in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Anthony uh, Egram 
what age did you decide, okay, I'm going to put everything into this and become a professional? Um, probably when I moved to Kansas. So I think I moved to the academy when I was 14. So I think that's when, well, because, you know, moving away from your family is a pretty big jump. So I kind of knew then, like, you know, I'm going here to make it pro. Mm-hmm. And that was my mindset as a 14 year old is that, you know, I'm going to this academy to, to make it professional. You know, I'm not leaving my family and putting all this hard work for, for nothing just to go through the academy and, you know, go back. So, um, yeah, I think when I was 14, I had that mindset that I don't know when it's going to happen, but, you know, I'm signing professionally either here or somewhere if, you know, if, if I'm, you know, moving all the way out here. So definitely 14. All right. Um, next is from Natine Ben Bogger. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> she goes, where, or he or she, where, I don't know. Where do you prefer to play the six or the 10? Uh, I'm going to say the 10 more just because I like scoring and assisting more. Um, so the 10 for me, but the six has its fun also just because you get a lot more time on the ball and a lot more space. So I feel like I can pick out some better passes, but I think I'd take goals and assist over nice passes. Uh, CoxCon 8-2, what team did you support growing up? Uh, definitely Inter Milan, just my dad's team. I kind of was forced to support him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, them and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Only team I really support. Obviously, I watch a lot, a lot of soccer and, you know, all the Premier League games, but I don't really – support many teams other than Inter just because of, you know, I mean, I support players. So, you know, if I know, know some guys playing, then I'll support them. But Inter is definitely my number one right now or has been forever. Okay. Um, another question is from Jeremy Myers. He goes, oh, no, no, C underscore Saul Morton. He goes, what is your hair, hair routine every morning? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's one of my friends I know. Oh. <laughs> I, know I know him, so that's – um hair routine. Um, I really don't have one. I kind of – water does it all. I mean, it looks a, little, it looks a little rough right now, but water after a shower, then I think every three days I'll wash it with the uh, shampoo and conditioner. Nothing special. I don't have a special routine. Is that dyed at all, or is that just natural? Yeah, no, it's no, nah, it's dyed a little bit. The tips, I get those re-dyed every couple months. Oh, okay, okay. So that's not natural. natural, but nah. All right, we have two more from Reddit. Uh, one's mm-hmm. Bookkeeper31. What is your favorite sandwich? Sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just from anywhere? Or anywhere. Like Or something that you'd make, like your like a like a go to sandwich that you make. Uh, okay, that's easier. I would go with any kind of bread, well, white bread, um, and either prosciutto or salami. Simple. Mm-hmm. I'm Italian, so those are the best. Yeah. I'll enjoy those the most. So it's a simple sandwich with those, like a roll or something. Perfect. Gotta be good bread though. Yeah, the bread. Yeah, the bread's the main part. If it's in, yeah. if it's wheat or whole grain, then it ruins it. Yeah. Well, All right. Last one from Lex Luther. What MLS player do you want to swap jerseys with that you have him? Ah, that's a good question. Right, scratch that. All right. Do MLS and then do like in Europe. All right. In MLS right now. Um, ah, I'll either say Nani or. Huh. I think Nani. Dude, Nani's Nani still playing, dude. Yeah, I know that's crazy. And the one <laughs> the one game I missed to suspension was against Orlando City. <laughs> so I actually had the chance to get that. But um Nani, I guess, or I guess now my Tweety, just because of you know, he's he's here now and you know, play somewhat the same position. And so yeah. that's pretty cool. But I think those two right now, but I probably have some more. I'm just going blank right now. <laughs> what about in Europe? Oh, in Europe. Okay, well we're gonna Say Messi, just that's the basic one. Um, I like Hazard a lot. I like Hazard, I would want his jersey. Hazard, um, Isco, I like Isco a lot. And Verratti or Pogba. And Tiago. Those three. Oh, yeah. dude, Tiago's a baller. I know, I know. Oh, love him. 
All right. All right, Jean Luca. Thanks for taking the time um, to do this interview with us. We uh, enjoyed it and welcome back anytime. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah.